I'm Ed Elliott, um, artist specialising in sculpture. Um, found sculpture for the first time in Foundation, which was in Cheltenham, University of Gloucestershire. Um, that's kind of the first time I found working in three dimensions and kind of learnt about space and everything. Thought it was fascinating. Decided to study fine art a bit more broad um, aspect rather than going straight into just sculpture. I thought it was a bit daunting at first. Um, studied fine art, got loads of different specialisms, but I found myself immediately in the sculpture department at um, Cardiff, well, UIC, which is now Cardiff Met. Um, and from that point, um, just got an obsession with three dimensions, really. That made more sense to me, making artwork under that bracket. Um, in my second year of studying, I found that my, my uncle in New Zealand was a sculptor who that was his profession on the other side of the world and I never realised before to that point after you know, I was studying sculpture for two years so I thought I need to go and meet this guy, I need to get over there so that was my goal after studying, I was saving up this money to try and get there which took a bit of time but I finally did a spot of travelling to get there and made a decision really over there to come back and try and be an artist full time which was a daunting decision um, but I thought, you know, you've got, well, you've, while I'm young, I've got no responsibilities or ties or kind of, you know, commitments. Give it a shot while I can and just see what happens. When I came back from New Zealand, um, I had a residency in South Wales, which was selected before I went. So it was a kind of reason to come and a time to come back. Um, and it was with Rod, which is like a, an urban rural dialogue in an art space in Carmarthenshire, um, like an artist run project. It's really, really great. It's still going. It's like an annual thing. Um, and that was, I think, the third year that it was running, um, 2011. And um, came back for that, so it was a selection of artists. Um, there was two curators that year, so you had five artists working from an urban environment, that kind of city environment, and five artists from a rural environment. And they were brought together in a residency to work together and create a dialogue with the arts, really. Um, and at that point, I came from the urban artist side. Um, although I'd kind of been, I'd moved to a rural area working. I'd been, I'd been an artist in the city for five years. So approaching that dialogue was fascinating. After doing some travelling as well, and I found it was the first point where I got feedback on my work in a kind of art context, which was great. Um, and it kind of gave me the determination to give it, a, give it a shot because that's what I was coming back to do. So it was, you know, it was good. Um, but yeah, from that point, um, when I left, that's when I was talking about a friend of mine that was met on the residency, I kind of knew him before, um, but he contacted me about this commission that, um, that the National Trust were advertising through Art Jobs Online, through the Arts Council, and I was getting my stuff through the South Wales Arts Council, so I wouldn't have got this opportunity at the time but he was based in London so he sent me the link and said you need to apply to this um, did and luckily got accepted you know that was that was my first kind of point of call of making a big piece of work for for an exhibition that was perfect because up to that point that was kind of when I got back it was about eight nine months of solid making work for exhibitions and just living on nothing eating dust and hair it was just really quite tough and then, yeah, the struggle kind of got to you eventually. You get a bit, you, just, you know, should I just get a job and get paid? Um, but, yeah, this opportunity came up and I thought, although I'm at the end, I don't really have any money left to put into making sculpture, this is a great opportunity. The exposure of the National Trust being involved in an event, I think they had 15,000 people visit that exhibition over two months. So that's the kind of reason I went full out on making this piece of work. And... Um, I knew at the time I didn't really have well, the money or the energy to kind of finish it off, but I did. I kind of put everything into this piece of work because I thought it might be the last thing that I do. Um, but yeah, from that exhibition it sold. So this guy approached me, who's a collector from Essex, who has a private collection, who is actually open to the public in the summertime, twice a year, twice a week, I think. Um, but yeah, he approached me and just flat out bought this piece of work and I was just gobsmacked. It's the first, you know, I didn't expect that to happen and that paid for me to carry on making sculpture for another six months, six to eight months really. So it kind of, at the end of what I thought was my journey of being an artist, it kind of carried on. I had this bank of money to, for me to carry on making, which was 
if I didn't have that, I think I would have been, you know, working in retail or something. <laughs> For me, being away and kind of getting out of the environment of being obsessively working and just doing your thing for me doing a spot of traveling and kind of just getting away meeting my uncle who's doing the same thing on the other side of the world um, massively inspiring character and just I just it was being absent from all of what you're involved in where I made the decision of really giving it a go because I think if I was just from education if I just carried on making you could burn out, I think. You just you need to really figure out what you're trying to do and where you want to go. And for me, I kind of realised that when I was with the frustration of not making and just thinking and drawing and writing, um, found myself coming back and hitting the ground running with just ideas and you know just tons of sketchbooks and notebooks, like kind of travel journals that I'd filled up with in inspiring stuff, ideas, people I've met, experience I've had, and stuff. And that really that really gave me the determination to give it a go properly. I think the sculpture department where I studied was, well, that's kind of the reason why I've ended up where I am, because it was a lot of theory-based stuff and a lot of kind of, well, you know, master's level philosophy we were studying at one point. It was just, it was a lot of thinking deeply into what you were doing, and that sculpture department specifically was really strong. And the connections of, like, the peers, friends and stuff that were studying um, and the conversations we'd have and what we'd think about and you know just yeah stuff like that. The first kind of glimpse into the, the, the art industry really was leaving college in the graduate hoardings project which was in Cardiff Bay and you've got the Norwegian church and the new barrage walk they were opening that up at the time and it was 2008 um, and basically yeah they, they wanted students to do something with the hoardings that they had, just stopping everyone seeing the building work. I think it was 26 metres of hoardings um, and they wanted just some artwork kind of decorating it or for people to enjoy and it could have been anything and it was an open brief and there was, there was five of us involved that ended up being four um, and we all worked together on a kind of collaborative idea and tried to think about this for the first time, you know, artwork in a public realm um, it was fascinating, it was a whole different environment to think about and we had a professional body, the Cardiff Harbour Authority com commissioning us to do it so we thought quite nerve-wracking, it's our first thing um, all worked together and thought we don't want this to just be an image on a hoarding or something, we wanted it to be interactive and fun and kind of you don't want to look at it, I mean we were told in uni that the average time people look at a piece of artwork for is six seconds so that's your window that you have and we thought we don't want people just to walk past and just look at something and just pass on by. We wanted something to be a bit more engaging, maybe interactive, don't know. So we, these ideas flowed along and we thought being students, being in the city in that environment, on every household that you go around on fridges, you have this magnetic poetry um, that people go and they make, leave little messages to each other, like rude ones or whatever, and just become playful with it and it's, it is just a playful look at, at poetry so we took that and thought if we expand this hoardings and cover it make it like a like a giant fridge kind of magnetic white well just a metal white um, hoardings and make magnetic words that are kind of big flexible and just playful it's like a giant version of what you do in your household and it's playful for kids for you know families whatever if anyone walking past it's like so it was just people came along and used the words to just make their own comments. And we had to use, we thought about, um, you know, the social and moral kind of aspects of it. And we didn't want to just pick random words. And we didn't want rude comments in a public thing either. So the, the words were from poems, from three different poems in kind of based or about Cardiff Bay or re like relevant to Cardiff Bay as a site. It's, it's tricky trying to get yourself out there, I think. I think people don't think about that as part of your existence being an artist, you think it's all about making. But for me, kind of being approached for commissions or getting my work out there is, is more about not making. I think 30-40% of my time is making, if that. The rest of it is admin, boring computer stuff, applying for things, looking for opportunities that you could put proposals in to get stuff um, that sometimes you never get feedback or hear back from anything. Um, you just constantly bombard things out there um, 
publicising yourself as much as artists are really bad at doing that. You've got to try and publicise yourself and get your stuff out there. And um, exhibitions and things, I mean, some commissions of mine have come from word of mouth before, people just knowing about me doing this for a certain amount of time and then people get talking, somebody wants something, you know, that way. But it's all, it's all different, really. That's one of the most valuable parts of being an artist, I think, is staying involved with your art contacts and your peers, people that are doing the same thing, because you're the only ones in the same boat. If you stick together, it's kind of, it's worth it. The arts collective that I'm part of, BRG, British Racing Green, that's been brilliant ever since we finished, because it started off as an arts collective in a broad sense. So there was a graphic designer and a, a writer and a photographer, a sculptor, two sculptors, um, an installation artist, you know, there's lots of different avenues of the arts together and the idea was a combination of creative minds to work together on projects and we did do exhibitions together and kind of group projects and things but it escalated into our collective kind of changing into more research aspect into collaboration because working together is a fascinating thing and now um, I think we're probably more of a, a collaborative research unit than anything else and we just we're not kind of geo specific although a lot of the members are still based in Cardiff there's kind of people all over the place now so it's growing but that's been really valuable staying in contact with those people just as friends as well as artists themselves just to have just to have people that know where you're coming from in certain scenarios if you speak to friends from school they have no idea what it's like trying to be an artist and they probably think you're a bit crazy about trying to do it really, <laughs> trying to make money or make a career and just live making artwork is not very stable. This is my studio set up at the moment and um, well from what you can see there's just wood everywhere here because it's kind of, this has been about a three year obsession of working with wood so I've got trees everywhere and just selections of timber that's been seasoning and pieces of work that aren't finished and just offcuts from different things that I might use for something else or um, but I've chosen this it's coming from a city and not being able to make the kind of sculpture that I wanted to make on a scale that was suitable moving to a rural area has enabled me to have a space like this which is this is under shelter and there's the kind of studio part there which is lockable but it's you know you're out in the elements you're open to the weather and it's kind of that suits what how I'm working at the moment um, but when it's cold, it's cold, and when it's wet, you get wet. But it's kind of, I couldn't have a studio indoors or in a kind of group um, studio setup doing this because it's just unsociable, you know, using loud machinery and dust and noise, it's not good. <laughs> it's easy to get lost in, in making and getting involved in your own stuff. And it's, for me, I kind of, once a year, just look back on everything you've done in that year and try and reflect on it and try and you know visualize what's been achieved in that year and then look to goals for the future of the next year things you want to achieve you know places you want to go what you want to see you know work you want to make yeah it's it's all about staying focused because i think if you just if you're not getting the opportunities and it's fight you know you're finding it quite hard it's easy just to get lost and lose your momentum and lose your way at trying to do it it's very easy to do that um, and again, you know, artist friends that you can talk to and bounce off ideas and just connections and people know about opportunities. That's it's all about kind of just keeping networking and keeping your contacts fresh really as well. And just getting out and meeting people. I mean, if you just make work all the time, you know, no one's going to see it and no one's going to ever see you. You've got to, there's two sides to it. You've got to be involved. I've started to figure out where I want to go with my work and what I'm trying to achieve with it really um, and that's that's where the determination is and it kind of for me like, like sculpture is a language and it goes beyond nationality and culture and, and you know language itself it's just it's something in three dimensions that if you're a human being you can understand and especially in a figurative environment which is what the direction I've chose um, and I kind of see myself my goal is to just carry on doing it but effectively reach different countries and just different people. When I was traveling, the most ins inspirational parts of that journey was meeting people where there isn't a language connection and you're communicating in the basics 
of you know you're trying to learn their language they're trying to learn yours and you're just trying to get by as a human being it's brilliant it's just inspiring stuff but i think art can do that and it can do it without words and and that's important to keep that with the ongoing things of like technology and stuff people are getting disconnected and getting kind of confused with everything and i think you need to kind of step back and look at things sometimes and i think art can make you do that you've got to understand that if you want to be an artist you have to put yourself up against the ropes and you'll want to give up all the time you're going to want to get a job get paid you know you want you need to buy food and you need to pay for the rent and you need to you know there's if there's money that needs to be spent every week uh, that you don't get being an artist i don't have an income or a salary so i just need to that my life needs to be different around that and make it work and it's tough sometimes because it you know especially life in in the uk for example is based around having a stable income and a rotation and my job isn't like that so if i get a pocket of money and that has to last for this amount of time sometimes i won't get paid for months which means i can't have certain things like bigger bills or a phone contract that is going to be more expensive you know there's, i just have to live differently it's tricky but it's just determination if you if you know you want to do something you you're going to do it anyway and nobody could put me off apart from myself <laughs>